Hello, my sweet friends. This is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. And in this tutorial, we are going to make this, um, I'm going to call it, well, it's an infinity knot, but I also um, have a braided join down the side. So it's an infinity knot ear warmer with braided join features. <laughs> try, to, try to get it fancy. Um, but here's what it looks like. Um, I know it's a, a beautiful, sunny summer day. I sure wish that uh, that it was cold so that we could wear this. No, I'm not going to push push winter here, but um, here they are. I've made three of them for you to see. Uh, they are absolutely beautiful. And um, it's just something that I think you're going to love to make. And I, I made all of these three in a matter of a couple hours. Like, I don't even know if it took me that long. And I'm going to make a bunch of them, actually, because I love them. I think they're very dressy, very, um, very nice looking. This particular one is the one we're going to make together. And it is um, Loops and Threads Flex Yarn in the color Silver Lining. Now, I also um, have a hooded cardigan way down on my channel if you click on videos and you scroll down you will you will find it that I made in this um, yarn and it's absolutely beautiful so take a look at that one as well um, now here it is off to the side a little bit and I really really like that look as well um, we've got next I've got uh, the one that I made in yarn inspirations Karen cakes rhubarb cream um, I just pulled the two colors from the ball and these are the two that I used uh, in the picture you don't see the braided join very very well but um, you can see it really well really when it's on your head so it's beautiful I love this idea too and I'll tell you in the um, end of the video um, my row cancer and what I did to get that to look like that and then this one as well is heartland yarn um, in the color badlands and grand canyon two of my favorite colors in uh, this uh, particular yarn so again I'll tell you at the end of the video um, my row counts for each of these uh, headbands all right so once you have your uh, your Addy 22 needle machine and your yarn of choice, we will get right at it. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> this is a little commercial break. <laughs> Before we get at it, I just wanted to ask that you would consider heading over to my Storytime with Nana channel. I have two channels. I have my knitting channel and I have this one. This one I have ignored for quite some time now <laughs> because I've put all my efforts into my knitting channel um, but I do have um, a lot of kids books on that channel I have like well over a quarter of a million views on my books um, I just need the subscribers I've got like 750 subscribers and I need to get to a thousand in order to have my channel monetized so I'm calling on my Koala Knits and Knacks family to to head over to this um, link and to click the subscribe button if you have kids that um, you think would enjoy watching uh, some stories listening to Nana read to them um, I'd be happy to I will be um, adding books starting very soon. I will be um, adding on a regular basis because um, I, I feel it's time to pick that up now again too. So um, if you would do that, I'm going to put the link down below in the description box and please help me out to get to a thousand and um, I would appreciate that so, so very much. Thank you, my friends. All right, let's get knitting. All right, so once your machine is set up, you're going to grab some waste yarn, yarn that is a different color in contrast to your working yarn so that you can see the stitches um, a little bit easier later when we um, want to close our end. And we're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. We're going to take that waist yarn, go behind that black needle in front, behind and in front, alternating like that all the way around. This is how we cast on. So then it will be in front of that last white one. When you get around, you're going to put it into your yarn feeder. Close the lid and you're going to the lid or the latch or the <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And we're going to knit seven rows of waist yarn or however many rows you normally do. So four, five, oops, six. Let's see if I have enough. For, I don't have enough for another one. So maybe that was seven because this is an old piece of, of waist yarn that I've used. So you're going to open your latch. You're going to put that in between the last white, the first black. You're going to change your row counter to zero and you're going to grab your working yarn. You're going to put it into your feeder in between the last white, the first black. Hold both of those yarn ends that are in the center there. Knit four needles. Then you're going to take both ends of your working yarn 
And this is the one you're going to watch because you see, and this one, you see how those loops are over the red divider there? If I just left that and kept knitting, those stitches would be, that tension would be too loose. Um, when I took my, my project off the machine, you would notice the t difference in the tension there from the rest. So I just take both ends and I pull it, help that one down until I get that nice and snug. Then you give this one little tie and now you go in your merry way. <laughs> okay. So we're going to knit 90 rows. Just straighten it like this. Keep turning and turning and turning. Put on some good music, watch a good movie. Get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or whatever you want to drink. <laughs> and you knit 90 rows. When I get to the place where this is starting to touch the table, I'll come and see you back and just show you very quickly what I do, okay? All right, friends, keep going. All right, so I'm on row 54, and you can see it's starting to touch the table. I do have a hole on the other side of my table that I generally put this one on, but um, I forgot to switch it around, and I just added my machine, and that's that. So if I would have been doing a blanket that's like 300 rows or like lots more rows, I would have made sure that I had that hole in in the table so this could keep going through because it's hard to to you can't roll your 22 needle um panel into into a donut just doesn't our tube into a donut just doesn't work so i just grab it from the bottom and i just let it sit on top there and i keep pulling it just like that um whenever it starts to get longer you just lift it up and let it sit in there and that's the reason because if you're new um if this is on the table and it's starting to bunch up like this well because the pre the it's touching the table and it's pushing up on your on your work here then you're risking um dropping a a loop off of these red teeth which will drop your row because your tension is getting really really loose up there you want to keep your tension nice and even and snug around the rim of your barrel as you knit you get nicer stitches and you don't uh risk dropping a row okay so that's why we do that and so i'm going to keep going and maybe after 10 or 15 rows or so i'll, I'll do exactly what i just did and, and uh rebunch it I'll show you here. I'll just keep going. That's 60. This yarn works beautifully in the machine. You're going to love it. If you um, are using the same yarn that I'm using, you're going to absolutely love it. Okay. 66. 67. 68. 69. And let's say 70. And we're going to stop. And we're going to just pick this up and bunch it up again. And that's all you got to do. Easy peasy. Okay, so keep going until you get 90 rows done, and I'll see you back. Okay, coming up on the end of row 90, and I take a black marker, and I color that, a permanent marker, that red divider between my last white and my first black, so I always know when it's coming around, and I can stop just at the perfect time, perfect place, and it's just a wonderful little thing to do. Cut your yarn, put it into the center of your machine, take another piece of waste yarn, we're going to put that be into our yarn feeder, shut the latch, put it between the last white, the first black. This one, we don't have to worry about the tension, like stopping and pulling the rows because it's your waist yarn. It's gonna come out. So now you're gonna just knit. I do seven rows, okay? Give a little tie on this one, just so that it doesn't start to come undone later. Okay, just one little tie. And I'm at the end of this piece of waist yarn too. I'll probably get around one more row here. That's all I can do, okay? Open your latch, put it between the last white and the first black. Then you rotate the barrel. So that's one time, and now it'll start letting go. The second time it lets go, you take it off, and there you have your beautiful piece of work, okay? So then we're going to take it off our machine. We're going to stretch it widthwise and lengthwise all the way down, okay? We're gonna set that aside. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to make one more panel exactly the same. And when you do that, um, you can remove your machine if this is your workspace and see me back and we will close up the ends. All right, so to close our ends, you're going to need two stitch markers. And if you follow me, you know that bobby pins are my stitch marker of choice. <laughs> you can buy them by like so many in a package i don't know 50 100 <laughs> in dollarama for like next to nothing and they're the best they they're the absolute best okay so this this side here 
is the beginning of our work project because when we where we started the first a waste yarn that we put on and we know that because it doesn't unravel very easily okay you have to pull out that first row so that's the one that you're going to want to be on if you're going to follow my directions here okay and then you're going to look at your waste yarn there's my waste yarn right there and and it's coming underneath this if i pull on it it's underneath this stitch i'm going to put a stitch marker in there that being my first stitch then if i go to the left of it you will see that this is your working yarn end right here and there's a loop right to the left of it that's the one you're going to choose and you're going to put your stitch marker into that one make sure that both of your ends are outside of your work otherwise you'll sew them inside of your work and then you'll have to undo it just to get them out <laughs> okay we're going to count because we know there are 22 stitches on this um knitting machine and on this on this uh tube here we're going to count to this so we get to the very middle one here so if there's 22 we're going to count 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 these two right here are the very side stitches over here i'm going to put my hook underneath number 12 count that as number one of stitches worked then go under number 11 put 11 through the loop that was on my hook now i've worked two stitches then i'm going to go down to the bottom here pick up one loop put it through the loop that's on my hook then go up to the top take that one put it through the loop on my hook that's four stitches worked go down to the bottom five up to the top six down to the bottom seven top eight doesn't matter if you go over your your stitch like this to pick it up or under like this to pick it up all you're doing is taking it through the loop on your hook so it really doesn't matter okay but you're going to count all your stitches as you as you work them to make sure that you get all 22 stitches because if you miss one of these as soon as you take your waist yarn out you're gonna, your row is going to start to unravel okay and you don't want that to happen i mean if you do don't panic it's fixable um but you don't want to to make a mistake like that when it's so easily um missable when you when you can avoid it very easily okay so you will always oops i got a little strand there you will always when you get to this bottom one this one on the bottom will always be 21 and if when you're counting that's not 21 then you've missed something and this is 22 pull it up finish that then you're going to take your yarn end yarn over pull it through that loop to tie it off and finish it off just like that once we have that done, you're going to roll it all up so you get the very top row. Very top, you see? And you know that because if you rock this back and forth, it's that loop that's over top of it is the very last um, row of stitches, okay? So you're going to pinch that stitch and you're going to pull that top row. I'm about six or seven stitches over from, the, from where this end was. Then I'm going to roll it up, go down five or six stitches, rows I mean. Then you're gonna make sure you're at the very top. You're gonna pinch that stitch, pull out that first row. And you're gonna do this all the way around for the first row, roll it up, get to that very first row. And if you make a mistake and you get the second row, you'll you'll knock this all up and you'll have to cut it off, okay? So that's why you wanna be very careful to make sure that you're rolling it up and getting the very top row. Pinch the stitch, pull it out. Now this is snagging because it's snagged. Okay, let me see here. Let me go down here. This stitch split. See this stitch when I was knitting it, it split on my machine. So that's why that's giving me some trouble. You can see that right there. Okay. So that just takes a little bit extra work. But now that I've wrecked that yarn, which is because I've used it several times already, um, it's done for. So I'm going to just cut that off because it's the stitch split and that's why it's not working properly. Okay. But that's how you do it. And then you can just, once you get that first row out, you can just unravel it just like this. Okay. And you've got a perfectly stitched up end. Isn't that just beautiful? All right. So now let's go to the other side. For the other side, which is the end of your work, you're going to make sure your ends are out. Okay. Just like so. I didn't leave a very big tail there, did I? And you're going to undo that knot. And you see where your waist yarn is coming out of that loop there? You're going to put your stitch marker in that loop. And then when you look to the left of it, you see two loops, one on top of the other. But this top one, if you pull it, 
it's this end okay it's it's attached to this with this um yarn end here and that's the one we're going to put our stitch marker in then we're going to make sure our ends are outside of our work we're going to count oops count around to 11 and 12 put your hook under number 12 then pick up 11 then 13 and then 10 back and forth and close it up just like we closed the other side making sure you work all 22 stitches all right go ahead and do that and when you're done i'll see you back all right so this is 21 finish that take out that bobby pin sometimes on the um smaller panels like this it can get or i keep calling it a panel it's a tube <laughs> but it is kind of a panel too um this last one can get tight so that's why these bobby pins are nice you can pull up on it in this case it's not tight but sometimes with a thicker yarn it is and so it's easier to get under that when you pull up on your bobby pin um and then you can just pull it out so easily okay so this is the end of our project and we know that because this unravels so beautifully i'm going to show you a little trick um i need to make mention let me just grab my needle here tina norton she's a su subscriber she came up with this idea and it's brilliant when you unravel your yarn it gets tangled around this piece right it always does and then you have to stop and untangle it not a big deal but <laughs> she just gave us this in our facebook group she gave us this idea where you just thread that through go into there and come out the side just like that take your needle off Leave a little loop there because if you pull it all the way through, you're going to have a hard time finding it. Just leave a little loop there. And so then when you unwind this, <laughs> genius, it doesn't get tangled around your yarn end. Like such a simple thing. But these are the things, my friends, that we learn in a Facebook group when we are in community with one another. <laughs> so now you just take that little loop and you pull it out. And look at that. Like magic, you've got two beautiful two beautiful tubes that are closed up um, beautifully on the ends and now we'll assemble. Okay, so we have stretched out our work widthwise and lengthwise on both pieces. Now we're going to take one and we're going to fold it in half just like this, okay? So it's folded in half and we're gonna take the other one, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? Oops, got it caught on this crochet hook. You're going to do the same thing and now we're going to loop them together as an infinity knot. All right, I just raised my camera a little bit. So they're both totally in half, okay? And the open ends are opposite each other. This end is open over here, this end is open over here. Going to just slide them down, <laughs> okay? We're going to turn them on their side. We're going to take this one on the left, put it over top of the loop, just like that. Just lay it over top. You can see that I've done that, okay? Then you're gonna put your hand in this one that's on the bottom into that loop. You're gonna grab both of these ends, grab them with your finger, pull it through that loop, and then pull. It's as simple as that, okay? And it should end up in the middle. Now you've got your infinity knot, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold this one down, okay? Just fold that bottom one down so that you get a better detail. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. Okay. And so now what we got to do is we got to join our sides together. And we're going to do that with a braided join. So grab your crochet hook. I'm going to just use my five millimeter crochet hook. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to find the side, the exact side. Let's just go to one end. Okay. Twist it so that the wide part of your V, you can see that here, the wide part of the stitch is going to the left, okay? And then we're going to follow that row all the way up. Then we're going to take the other one. We're going to do the same thing. The wide part of the V is on the left. We're going to follow that all the way up. We're going to put those two beauties together just like that. Oh, you guys, this yarn is so luxurious. Like, it's really so beautiful, okay? It's the same one I made my hooded cardigan with and I had leftovers and I decided I'm going to make a headband. Okay. So now that we've got that all lined up, we're going to start and you don't have to get quite so up to the inside there. Start where you can easily pick up your stitch. Okay. It's not going to make a difference. Then go over to the other side, pick up and pull it through that loop on your hook. Okay. 
making sure that these are evenly lined up so that you don't have one longer than the other. This is where I picked the last one up. So I'm going to count one, two, go into that one, pick up that center of that stitch, put it through the loop on my hook. This is where it came out before. So one, two, pick it up, put it through the loop on my hook. One, two, pick it up, put it through the loop. One, two, we're going to do this all the way down. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And you're going to complete that all the way down to the end, okay? I'm just going to stay on with you because it's not far. This is the braided join. One of my favorite ways to join panels to join tubes, to join anything. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I join, you know, you can you can even join a flat panel like this. Um, but I, I join most of my blankets, my tubes that I make blank when I make blankets. This is the join that I generally use. Unless I have um, like stripes or something on it and I really want a solid um, join where where there's not a braid that's like breaking up your, your pattern, then I, I'll use the invisible join, but this is my favorite. I just love this one. Okay, so you can quickly see that I have only one, two, three, four stitches on this side and I have about six or seven on that side because when I started up here, I didn't, um, I wasn't exactly the same, but I'm gonna make that work. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go one on this side and then I'm gonna go two on this side. I'm gonna do one more on this side. You would never do this with a blanket, just saying. But because with a blanket, you would have made sure that it's all lined up perfectly, okay? But because of the knot, um, it was impossible to get it perfect. So, so we just make it work, okay? Made it work just like that, okay? Now, um, what we're gonna do, look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that pretty? Now I've got to, because I've got my, my tails on, on the, opposite ends of both um, I have to I have to knot that off with another piece of yarn so I'm going to use the one that's already on my needle I'm going to go ahead and pick up this stitch just like that if you can do it so that so that one of these yarn ends is in the middle here um, that's the best okay we're gonna pull that through but it's very, very easy to fix if you don't. Then I'm gonna go through that top stitch there and through the top stitch here on the side. And we're gonna just finish that off, okay? We can tie a knot. Okay, and then just let that be because we're gonna sew this, we're not done. So we're gonna be sewing that up in anyways so we're going to just leave it for now we're going to go across to this other side making sure that the right side of our braid is up so that you're not braiding on that other side okay right side of our braid is up and we're going to do the same thing we're going to find our ends our side we're going to make it so that the wide part of the v is going down line it up as best that you can I'll do a better job at lining this side up than I did the other side. Okay. Got that untwisted. And then we can just start about there. Okay, there. And my row is twisted under there. I'm going to start like that. It's just, um, you do the best you can to figure out where the beginning would be. Okay. And then you start one, two, one, two, and I'm going to work this all the way up to the top again. And when I get there, I shall see you back. All right. So this side is going to be almost perfect. Okay, 
almost I say I think I'm one stitch oh no it is actually perfect 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 so you seen how I just lined it up and followed it down to the beginning I'm better than I did on that first other side um that's what you got to do okay so now I have that yarn end that was just there for me I'm going to pull it through that loop tie it off I'm going to reinforce that okay going through that very first stitch there and on the other side the same thing then tie a knot just so I can make sure that it's secure okay so there we go we've got our beautiful beautiful piece what happened to my knot there oh because it's this way messed with my head a little bit here I turned it around okay and there's our our knot right there now all we got to do is this is the right side facing and that's what we want and we're going to put those two right sides together just like that we do not need all these little yarn ends so you find whichever one is the longest and it's going to make it to the this one here is my longest I can sew with that one what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take all of these yarn ends and I'm going to hide them okay get them out of my way and then we'll begin sewing um, up so I'm simply going to just put them on my needle and I'm going to follow underneath here I only have to go one way because when I sew it up with that other one it's going to catch it and um and it's not going to come apart okay so go ahead hide all those yarn ends leave the one that's the longest on the end and see me back I'm almost done but see me back in a second there we go it makes it so much easier to sew doesn't it when uh when you've got all those little extra ends that you don't have to fight around and it's all good okay so here we go we're going to put those two sides together and we are basically going to just simply stitch them together go through and around go over top pick up that top row I'm going backwards here generally I would go from front to back but I think this helps to keep my hand out of the way <laughs> of the camera so that's why I'm doing it this way okay and we're going to fasten that off all the way down the row okay so you go ahead you could also use a crochet hook and uh you know a piece of yarn and you can do a slip stitch closure all the way down there's many ways that you can close this you pick your favorite way but this is the way that I'm going to do it um I find it easy and very effective and it's secure and we're good okay all right so keep going my friends till you get to the end and I'll see you back All right, made it to the end. I'm going to make sure those two little loops that are sticking out there are caught. I don't know what they are, so <laughs> better to be safe than sorry. We're going to knot that. Go in one more time. And knot it. And then we're going to take this yarn end. I hope my camera's not too low, because then sometimes that distorts the picture, but I'm just going to go with it here. Back and forth. Cut it off and turn it in the other way so the right side is out and look at that isn't that beautiful because of the this um flecky kind of of yarn you can't see the braid very well probably in the, oh yes you can in the camera i'm looking up at it now it's beautiful like i had this i had this plan this idea while I was laying in bed trying to sleep <laughs> not sleeping thinking I should figure out a new type of headband that we don't see on on YouTube and I thought let's let's and this came to my head and I thought yeah that'll work <laughs> so there you go my friends it's a lot less than your 46 needle um if you have the 22 needle machine and you thought that one of these was too narrow but your 46 you find is too big perfect option. <laughs>
<laughs> okay and it's so so pretty like look at that it's just so pretty you can put that at the front of your head or you could have it on the side off to the side and i'm telling you it'll be beautiful okay so there you have it my friends okay so now for the row counts for this particular one you are going to cast on with your waist yarn then you're going to put your first color in you're going to do 45 rows of one color then you're going to change colors and do 45 rows of your second color then you're going to end with your waist yarn and take it off your machine you're going to make two exactly like that and when you put them together this is how it will it will look now for this one you're going to um cast on with your waist yarn you're going to do 90 rows of one color put your waist yarn and then cast off and then you're going to do a second tube with your second color 90 rows of that same color okay and that's how you make all three of these beautiful headbands so thanks again my friends i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial uh, please make sure you give it a like and which is a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and if you want to come over and join my facebook group which i'm asking you to do because it's such a great place then i will have the link below in the description box so you can click on that and uh, i hope to see you there so again thanks again for watching this video thanks for making um, the things that I present to you and for being such an awesome part of my um, channel community. I appreciate you all so, so very much. Um, again, make sure that you post in my Koala Knits and Knacks Facebook group so we can see your work. All right, friends, take care and we'll see you in the next video.